Well, I just finished taking the Unit 2 test. And, of course, I can use my notes, too. I didn't need to often because I have been studying this as of late. And I know you folks have been doing, in general, your homework log and writing things out and your lecture booklet. But I thought it probably would be a good idea if I gave you a little review, particularly on the formulas that I came across and then their use. Now, I'm not going to give you any specific examples, but uh, I'm going to give you some techniques. So if I were a student watching this, I would take some notes on this. You could put it in your homework log if you like for some quick references to the kinds of problems you're going to get and the formulas you're going to use. So that's what this is all about. So we have here direct variation where we use the formula y equals kx. And often what we have to do is solve for k. They're going to give you a y value or something that would be out here. And they're going to say something is in direct proportion or variation to something here. You solve for k by dividing both sides by x. And that gives you your new k. So then you put in your new value of k. And then they will give you a new value of x usually. And then you solve for the y. And if it's an inverse variation, then the general formula is y equals k over x. And then sometimes they have uh, something might be squared or something like that. Again, we're not able to ask every single kind of question we have possibly had in Unit 2. On this test, there's only 27 questions. Okay, another kind of formula that we use is proportion, where we say this is compared to this. And I didn't write it down, but I think you know what a ratio is. And it'd be like A to B, or we could write it A over B. And the thing is, when you make your comparison, they must be the same kind of units. So if one is in hours and the other is in minutes, you change them both to minutes or both to hours, depending which would be easier, and then you simplify. Another kind of formula we had was function, and it wanted us to graph a function. And we gave you that special technique when it's in this form what is in this position here is where your graph will cross the y-axis. This is called the y-intercept. And we just put a dot on 1. And then our slope is 2 over 1, so that would be y-units over x-units. And our x-units, as we see here, is 1, so and it's positive, so we go over 1 mentally and then up 2, and then in math lab our line would form, but you'll have to pick out a graph that would match that particular uh, function. Now if it were a negative function, here originally it's positive, it would just go this way, in a sense an opposite direction. This line indicates negative slope. Then we talked about exponential function, and this was the general formula. And by putting various values here, it always went through 1, and it ended up with a curve sort of like so. Now, if b were a large number, these lines would get closer. If they were a small number like this, would be sort of like a 2. Uh, they, they look like this, get further away from the y-axis. You remember we said that this was the horizontal 
asymptote that this line here as it went got closer and closer but never touched. Okay, uh, we're getting some other things there. Now, the other thing too is like domain and range here. What would be the domain and range of this? Well, we said domain were our x elements. So this eventually went on to negative infinity and then eventually goes to positive infinity in this direction. And the range of it, it never quite reached zero. So we'd say a parenthesis at zero. That would be y elements. And it goes to positive infinity. All right, just some general review things. Now, we then spent the last few lessons on simple interest and money-related things. Well, the formula for simple interest is your interest is equal to the principal. That's the amount of money you borrow or need to pay back. And the rate, it's usually as a percent. Now we have to remember we have to convert that to a decimal. 0 0.05. That is the decimals here. We have to move it over two places. Take away the percent sign. And then by time. This will give you the simple interest. And then we had a modification of this where the future value of simple interest here, the A is the letter we use for future value. And that would be the amount of money that you're borrowing, your principal. In class, we said that was $100, just to give an example to what we get from the bank. And then we put in parentheses 1 plus the rate we're going to use. And then time, in this case, would be number of years. And, of course, this is what I'm going to expect on your loose-leaf paper in support of the answers on our test. And I did that, too. All right, another important formula we'll use is future value, but not simple interest now. Now it's compound interest. And this is the general formula here. So, what does it involve? Well, A is the future value. P is your initial principal. And then in parentheses, 1 plus the rate. And then M is the number of times it's compounded each year. So, if it were annually, this would be a 1. If it was semi-annual, this would be a 2. If it were quarterly, this would be a three. <laughs> Wait a minute. This would be a four. Getting carried away there. Sorry about that. Yeah. Quarterly, this is four. Monthly, this would be 12. Uh, daily, we said that was 365. And then one formula, I don't think we used it. Uh, continuous interest, I could just put it here. We didn't, I didn't see it on the test today, so maybe you don't have to know this one for the test, but just to give you all the formulas, it would be the letter E. Well, let me do that again here. Yeah, and I checked, we didn't use this one on the test. Again, we can't, you know, we're only having 27 questions, so, uh, but this would be future amount, uh, continuous interest, where this is the principal, this is E, and then we had a caret, and we had to put that in parentheses, RT, but we're not using that. Now, an important thing in this is to read the question carefully. I had potentially one error when I was doing this because I didn't read the question carefully. 
if they're asking for future value, that's A. But sometimes they are asking for amount of interest. Now, how do you find that? Well, you subtract your original principal from the future value and that will give you interest. Now that's tricky because they had in one of the multiple choices they had the future value and you know you might say oh that's the answer I got. No you have to subtract the principal from the future value to see what interest you earn. So be careful about that. So in looking now at this uh, formula, this is if you know the future value A, but you don't know the principal, what it was when you started or what you needed to get this amount, this is the equation you would use. And it's the same as the one above where this is the rate, this is the number of times it's going to be compounded in a year, and then this is the number of times compounded, and T is the number of years. This is one of our quiz questions. What does, in the other book they're using an N for this, but I think it's a little more clear this way. All right, the effective annual yield formula that if something is 5%, let's say, and they want to know what it would be if it were compounded quarterly or semi-annually or monthly, what would be? It would be larger than 5%. And this is the formula. So if it's compounded quarterly, this would be a 4. Uh, semi-annually that would be a 2 and of course this would be a 2 up here then or a 4 up there whatever this number is you then do the division here rate divided by the uh, period of compounding then add one to it then raise it to that period of compounding power then subtract one and that's your uh, effective annual yield formula. And then just a little review. Uh, exponential form is this. Uh, 3 to the second power is equal to 9. And they're related to a logarithmic form that your base here, this is log of your base. Now 9 is the answer and that goes there. And the exponent, as we said in lecture, goes there. So again, believe me, folks, there's a lot of hints then of what you will be using on your paper test on Tuesday. And generally, you know, the formulas and the things we're dealing with here are medium in difficulty. I found there is one that is difficult. So what I will do is put that hint on the board. And then if you know how to do it, then you will be able to get that answer. But that would be, I think there's only one that would be sort of a real challenge. And I thought that was good for the uh, academic soul of a student. Okay, I'll keep this uh, under 15 minutes, and I did.